Mike, Monet, Sizzly, Pissarro, Blimick, and the rain, and the barbers in school, all these great outdoor painters. I love to paint outdoors. The outdoors is my studio. And there, I see, love to see the light. And I always try to remember my first impression of a scene because I mean, uh, my economics are such that I can't go back and forth. Cab costs a lot of money. So I paint until dark, you know, until late hours of the evening. But the people go by and they say, Tommy, it's too late, it's dark. Oh, I say, I'm only drawing, I'm only drawing. But I remember the colors. There have been occasions where I put green where it's supposed to be blue or, or red where it's supposed to be some other color in the late of the hour of the night. But that was all right. Sometimes I deliberately transcend my trials and tribulations and insist upon a cheerful painting. And for instance, I, if I find myself with a gray sky, because uh, for the moment, why well, I painted blue because it's going to be blue in the afternoon when the sky is changing, and so I, 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 I am the boss of my canvas. I'm the master of my art. great joy in painting and the freshness of nature and the, the light and the different colors and also how a flower grows from a bud into a bloom and how it has this tenderness and the strength and how it from birth to to maturity and then unto age and unto death is, is symbolic for me. of seven, my mother took us all to Sicily. The sea would be blue and the sails white and the, the figs are ripe and rich in color or the cactus are full of color or everything, in the, the gardens of olives and the gardens of oranges and especially the oranges and the lemons are full of color. And so I was nurtured in color even before I ever became mature enough to know what impressionist art was or any other art and I learned to I, I it was in, inside of my system the, the love for color
If you will look closely at my painting, you will uh, you put your hand across them, you feel like needles and uh, and mountains, uh, rustic and rough. The reason for that is that when you I use a knife as if it were a brush, and uh, and but the results are not as if it, as it is like you would put a brush. When you put a brush, you use a brush, you get the result of a brush. But when you use a knife, thinking of it as an as a brush, you, you automatically make the paint heave. This easel is my favorite easel because I've gone through a great many trials with it in the winds and the storms and all kinds of weather and it's rugged and I can cramp, use clamps to hold it up and, to, and then I use cinder blocks, I tie wires and rope and strings so that the wind doesn't blow me off and fly like a kite. I really have great faith in this easel. I couldn't be by one of those ones I used to have before years ago that I bought when I first started taking art, those little fl flimsy ones. But I, I've, in the last 35 years, I've been, in the later, later part of the last 35 years, I've been using strong easels like these. I painted now this uh, church of St. Xavier, the Dove of the Desert, twice. And this, this one I'm talking about now is the one which uh, shows all the more those domes, uh, those round domes, uh, eggshell-like, you know, half of an eggshell up there and, and the squarish, uh, musk-like uh, structure on the left-hand side and uh, the mystery of the car of the uh, the section that where you can see right through them and uh, and see the sky and also the mound that's there in Tucson is a mound that, uh, with a that le with a path that leads to it with a cross on top of it i must confess i had problems doing the architecture i'm but i'm going to go back there someday and i'll be the master of that those structures I will, the towers in particular. I will.